Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how to make this holograph effect in Blender 2.8 and I think this is this tutorial is going to be very useful to anyone who wants to learn uh, the basics and uh, maybe some intermediate or advanced uh, way to set up materials using material nodes or shader nodes in Blender 2.8. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be creating, not the entire scene. If you want to watch the entire, how I set up the entire scene, you can just go to my second uh, channel. I've just uploaded this video, this time lapse, so you can see how I set up everything thing from start to finish. Uh, but uh, this story is, is mainly going to focus on making the shader itself. And uh, yeah, so this is what we're going to be looking at. So yeah, let's start by creating uh, an object we're going to work with. I'm just going to create this fridge here. Uh, so very, I'm going to use projection mapping so that I don't have, a, don't waste a lot of your time uh, modeling the entire uh, object. So yeah, let's get into it. So open up a new Blender project. I've just I split my screen so that I have my materials on this side and uh, my viewport here. I've also dragged an image, uh, a Coca-Cola fridge image into my viewport so that I can use that uh, for my projection mapping. So I'm just going to add a plane, I'll rotate it 90 degrees to face me. I want, it to I want to scale it so that it's at least the size of the fridge. So let me just, something like that. I think that is too small. I think something like that. And now I can apply scale and then I can use projection from view. Now, if you go to UV editing, let me just view editing and bring up that image. I can go to shading just so I can have this texture applied to this material. Okay, then it's hanging. Yes, a bit. Apply any material and bring in uh, the texture. So texture, image texture, and then select uh, our image fridge. Now all we are left with is uh, just move these vertices in this view uh, to match Just move the corners to match the corners I like this uh, so that we have something like that and now I can select everything extrude and uh, let me move this aside I can just move move my view area uh, to kind of mimic uh, the perspective of this image and then I already move the vertices, match uh, the front vertices to match uh, the corners of this fridge, uh, the front area. So I just need to select the inverse of this so that I select only uh, the back side, as you can see, and I use that and then unwrap this using projection, projection mapping. So you just hit you to get this mean and then unwrap projection from view. So now if you go to the textures, you can see this is what we have. I just now need to select these vertices. Remember, I'm only selecting uh, the back vertices. I'm not selecting these front vertices as we have already matched them to the texture. So just select those and uh, scale them up. Now I can start moving uh, these corners to kind of match where they would be in, in the image. And you can see as I'm moving them, uh, you can see how uh, the texture is also getting aligned better so something like that and uh, if you want to add in some details you can see this is there is some kind of extrusion here i can add a loop around there maybe add another one here select this edge push it out like that and uh, bevel this now for the top part it's not very necessary but uh, if you want you can just select it and just unwrap and put it somewhere where you have better details. And uh, this side also should be matched uh, to this side. Or if you don't want to go through that, what, the process of matching that, you can just select uh, these faces then select these 
uh, just actually before you do that you can select these vertices here shift s cursor shift s cursor to select it so that you snap uh, the cursor to this and then select this side shift this so that you duplicate uh, this side uh, it will also come with this own texture like that and now with the cursor at this point you can just change uh, the pivot point at 3d cursor and then scale this on the x-axis by zero it should snap these edges all the edges you have on this side and uh, hopefully with the texture as well as you can see we have that now uh, we have some duplicates here so i'll just merge uh, to remove uh, the duplicates and uh, now we have our object shade smooth uh, turn on auto smooth and uh, we have our fridge done now you can go on and add in more details uh, like uh, this bend here but i think this is going to be enough uh, for what we want uh, so now that we have the textures done how we can go to the materials and start setting up uh, our uh, where is the project our hologram so uh, the first thing we want to set up is uh, if you can look if you look at this you see that uh, uh, the edge is a bit highlighted and uh, for that we're going to be using fresh the fresh no node or layer weight node uh, to get uh, the edges a bit highlighted and uh, we're going to also be using the emit some emission in this in the shader to kind of uh, have them a little give off light so let's go to this to, uh, to rendered mode i'll also turn the background or world setting uh the world color uh make it dark uh, so that uh when we turn on the emission uh, it's a bit more it gives off enough light so let me turn off this delete that we don't need it anymore now i can add a fresh node so shift a input you can either use fresh or layer weight it will give you the same options but i like using uh the facing in the layer weight it it's the same as uh fresh but uh that but it's more pronounced you can see so this will affect will give off a uh, a black and white a shade depending on the angle uh, that you that you're viewing the model from so if i add say a color a, a convert color ramp just play around with the contrast you can see that uh, the shade changes as the object changes uh, but uh, because we have a lot of sharp edges here uh, it may not very be easy for you to see so i'm just going to add a, a suzanne here suzanne head so that you can see the curves how it, it affects the curve i'm also going to uh, uh, turn on subdivisions for this uh, give it the same material as this so Control l link uh, materials and, uh, if we preview this you can see how the freshener is affecting uh, the edges maybe i should give this a uh, solidify sorry uh, bevel just so we have make sure that if us see how this looks uh, you can see how now we have a little bit of detail in the edges uh, like that so we're going to use this as a mask uh, for our emission so that the edges are always a bit lit and I think I can push uh, the edges just a bit. Something like that. So that we have a faint line at the edge. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me preview this material. Uh, we don't need the texture just yet. Uh, we're just working on the emissiveness of the material. So I'll connect this directly to the emission. And, uh, you can see now uh, that is emitting uh, but uh, we also want our object to be kind of transparent as well as, as you can see in the original version uh, the edges are always a little bit of peck uh, than the middle areas you can see so again we can use the fresh node to do that so i'm going to use uh, the color output from this to you i'm going to use it as the alpha value here to kind of affect uh, the alpha material let me just preview this directly here so that we can see 
uh, the back how the background kind of go through. Uh, because we are using EV, uh, it doesn't render alpha by default. Uh, you have to go to the material settings, uh, which is under here, and turn on uh, alpha blend in the blend mode here. Now you can see how the edges are a bit transparent. I think are uh, they too sharp uh, for the fridge. So I'm just going to extend it just a bit so that we can see a little bit of something in the yeah, you can see that. You can play around with the roughness here, but I, I don't think it's going to do much. Now we can bring in some color. Uh, for that, we can. There are a few ways to do that. We can just colorize uh, this here, the color ramp, or we can just add another color ramp uh, to help uh, with that. So, so that we don't really affect uh, the alpha here using by changing the colors here. So if I connect this. Uh, then I can give this a different color. So let's see, something like that. So the edges will be a little bit blue and uh, the rest. So I can connect this to the color. But uh, you can see the color is coming through, but it's not that powerful because it's being overpowered by the emission values here. So I can connect this directly to the emission uh, so that we get the same effect. Okay, so then 